Oliver Stone has won Oscars for Platoon, Born on the Fourth of July, and Midnight Express. But his latest project took him about as far from Hollywood as you can get. Over two years, he recorded 20 hours of interviews with Vladimir Putin, the Russian president, getting his perspective on everything from last year's US election, the Syrian conflict, and tensions with NATO. Today, это внешнеполитический инструмент Соединенных Штатов. Там нет союзников. Там есть только вассалы. Когда страна становится членом НАТО, ей уже очень трудно сопротивляться давлению со стороны такой крупной страны, лидера НАТО, как США. И там легко появляется, может появиться все, что угодно. И система противоракетной обороны, и новые базы, и если потребуется, и новые ударные комплексы. А нам что делать? His four-part documentary, The Putin Interviews, is airing this week on Sky in the UK and Showtime in the US. He joins me now in the FT studio in New York to discuss the series. So the last time we met was Venezuela, was the film, your film about Hugo Chavez. Um, and about the seven, eight other presidents of South America. That's right. That and at, at the time he told me that the West viewed Chavez incorrectly and had the wrong impression of him. Does the West have a similarly wrong impression about Vladimir Putin? I think so. I'd say so, yeah. I think uh, a big divide. And uh, I'm not going to say that I have all the answers by any means. Uh, I got to know him in, during the shooting of Snowden uh, because I went, the last scene we were shooting in Moscow and uh, Ed himself was in the movie to finish the movie. And at that point we moved the cameras over uh, two days later to the Kremlin and mm -hmm. quietly went in and started these series of interviews that lasted two years, four different interviews and approximately 20 hours of film. So several trips, 20 hours of film, yeah. and you clearly enjoyed his company. You seem to look um, from the I episode. Right. Whatever you make a movie, whether it's a documentary or mm. a film, I, you know, you work, you, you, wanna, you want it to work. Uh, mm. I, with actors, I would encourage my actors, and, and I, as I said somewhere else, if I'm, a, I'm the best friend of the actor while I'm making the movie. I right. try to be. I'm rooting for him to succeed or her. With, with that in mind, yeah. um, do you have any misgivings about his policies, about the actions of the Russian well, state? You're asking for my opinion now. You yeah. have to, inside that framework of about four hours of film, mm. you'll find very little opinion from me. You know, so it's, uh, I, first of all, I'd like to say that it presents his point of view as well as I could, the same way that my Snowden film presented Snowden's version of mm. the story. Do you, tr do you trust that he was telling you the truth in the interviews? I mean, well, he said that they didn't hack the election. Hacking an election, what does hacking mean? Hacking mm. means getting into somebody's computer. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's possible that because hacking is a fashion of the day, and every country is doing it, uh, independent actors are doing it, no one seems to know who's hacking who, and that is a very important, relative, relevant question. Mm. I don't think people understand this issue of hacking. Mm -hmm. I've tried to educate myself. I'm not an expert, but Snowden's, the Snowden movie certainly brings, comes into that arena. Mm -hmm. So let's say it's possible that they got into the computers of the DNC, but we don't know that for sure. And when the American intelligence, three of them, not, not 17, three of them said what they said, mm -hmm. that was a, th it was class classified as an assessment. Right. It was not an estimate. Right. This was a thin assessment. And veteran journalists and veteran uh, people who worked in the surveillance community pointed that out to me on day one. Mm -hmm. They said that this is not a normal procedure. Mm -hmm. That the CIA, the, N the NSA, and the FBI, with a week and a half to go in the Obama administration, suddenly put out this assessment. It's basically a slap in the face of the new incoming president and in saying that you're a Manchurian candidate mm -hmm. and that you're in office because of the Russian uh, interference. Mm -hmm. This was stunning. I mean. That's as hostile as any administration can be to another one. Can I just go, go back to, yeah. the, to the film and to, to Putin, particularly on Syria? Yeah. Um, now, you spent some time with him talking about the Syrian strategy and what, what Russia was doing in, in Syria. Yeah. Um, Human Rights Watch says Russia has committed war crimes in Syria with the, the bombing of Aleppo, civilians, children killed. Yeah. I mean, going back to this point about your, your personal feelings of the man and, and, and of the policies. Does, does any of that cloud well, uh, the When I see Syria, uh, you know, I, Human Rights Watch, as you know, has been sometimes c accused of pol politicizing situations, mm. uh, certainly in South America, here or there. The United States has used it at will. There's all kinds of internet r uh, rights organizations that go come out of the woodwork at times and say things. 
But the United States has used human rights as a way to advance its foreign policy interests. You know, why is Saudi Arabia never brought up on serious things and Syria is and so forth and so on. I don't doubt that the Assad regime is a tough one, but it was a secular one. But you're dubious about these claims about Russia? Well, yes, of course I am. Right. And I'm right. saying to you that uh, when the United States went into Iraq, broke Iraq, as Colin Powell said, and completely brought chaos to the Middle East on a new level with all these refugees, and then did it again in Libya, mm. when Mr. Putin says in the interview that <laughs> if this happens again to Syria, which has been in an alliance with us since the 1970s, there will be complete chaos in the Middle East, and we are only 1,500 miles from Damascus on the map. Right. There is a significant component of Muslims in, in Russia, about 13 percent, something like that. They are integrated into the Russian Federation, but there is a possibility that the hotheads, the younger people, will be affected by Muslims uh, preaching uh, hatred and uh, this, kind, this form of terrorism. Mm -hmm. That's what concerns Russia. Okay. They have a, a link to Syria. But they also, and, but, and an alliance, but they also have a fear that the Caucasus would be engulfed once again in, in, in flames and revolt like there was in the Chechnyan War of mm. 2000, the last one, the second war. I, I just want to say this is a big issue if it's next door to you. Right. And they are much closer to them than they are to us. Final question, very quickly. Um, how, in your view, should the U.S. approach Putin and Russia now with a new administration? With a in this matter of Trump, I would be, I think there is a significant battle going on between uh, the concept of the presidency and who really runs America, which is at the heart of democracy. Where is the real conflict? Who is the enemy? Are we the enemy to ourselves? Are we, are we in the grip of a dictator? The dictator is money. The, the dictator is the state that exists. Can we control it? These are questions we have to ask. We have to examine our own country. Okay. Is Putin relations? Yes, of course. I think he would, has said repeatedly, I'm open for dialogue. He'd like to have a better relationship. It would be in our interest to fight the war of terror with them. They're very good at it. Mm. Number two, they can help us with the environment. They can help us with nuclear weapons. We could cut back. Remember the old Gorbachev-Reagan way of doing things? They were talking about cutting back. They did for a while. Mm. There's been no peace dividend since then. Okay. There is an interest in the United States in money and making products of war and selling them to other countries and militarizing regions such as the Middle East. That's the, the, the end result, as well as refugees spilling over from every war-torn country going to your Britain, uh, of course. your France. And yeah. I can only see more chaos in the future if you follow this program. Mm. America's interests are not necessarily Europe's. Mm. You should deal with that issue. Okay. Oliver Stone, thanks for coming. Thank you, Matthew.